Good morning. Happy Pride Sunday to you on this 27th day of June, the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. It is good to be with you this morning uh, from wherever you are worshiping with us. There are some exciting announcements for the life and ministry of the church, and so I hope that you are able in this moment to pay close attention. And if you miss anything, you can go back and watch it again, or you can get news in our update or contact us. The first is that the daily devotion group, which meets at noon Monday to Friday, has uh, started recently a book study on finding God in ordinary time. Uh, And again, you do not have to read ahead before the Zoom meeting. You can jump in and catch up with where they are, and they will be happy to invite you and welcome you to that group. Today is the last day to RSVP for our day at Mo on Saturday, July the 3rd. We're going to meet officially from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. You are welcome to come during the day. You are actually welcome to make reservations to stay overnight if you don't want to drive home in the evening. Uh, Lunch is on your own and dinner is a barbecue style cookout that we will provide the food for. And so we really do need RSVP so that we can provide the right amount of food. No one will go hungry. So contact me or Gina Acri or our church office uh, administrator at her email address so that you can be on the list today. Uh, We announced last week, but I will repeat it again because many of you uh, are on vacation and traveling and miss things, that our interim search committee did a phenomenal job and Dr. uh, Reverend Dr. Richard Dick Kreutzer has agreed to be our interim pastor. He and his wife, Betty, are very, very familiar with Madison Square and we are very familiar with them. And we look forward to them joining us in the month of August for the interim. And uh, stay tuned. The re-entry team has gathered more people. We are calling it the reopening council. It is including the worship team and the worship chairs and the parts of the tech team and others in leadership to kind of work out all the details of what it would mean to reopen the sanctuary. And we are going to present that plan to the session on Tuesday night and ask them to vote on it and to ask questions of us uh, and make sure that it is as reasonably safe to reopen as possible. And uh, so stay tuned next Sunday to hear announcements about how that meeting went and what the plan is to reopen our sanctuary. And finally, we wanna give a financial update about the health and status of the church now that we are about halfway through our calendar year. And so I'm gonna ask our church treasurer, Margaret Erickson, if she would be willing to come and give us a report herself. Yes, yes, Margaret has reminded me that I agreed to begin the conversation and that she would follow up. Thank you, Margaret. So my piece of that puzzle is to tell you about the expected income and expenses that we had budgeted for and had thought ahead about. Amazingly enough, this wonderful congregation has given above and beyond our budgeted projected income so far this year, which is remarkable and a testimony to your faithfulness and to the work of this church, even during COVID. And on the flip side of that, our expenses are under budget for a number of different reasons. Uh, We have had some challenges with a water main, a water line breaking during our freeze that we are just wrapping up construction and repairs from and other things, but according to our budget, we are actually under budget for expenses for this part of the year. And so we give thanks to God that in terms of what we expected and what we could budget for, we are doing very well. Uh, And now Margaret's going to talk about some unexpected news. Good morning. My name is Margaret Erickson, and I'm the treasurer for Madison Square Church. This morning, I want to tell you about two past saints of Madison Square, Maydell and Walter Rowley. Here they are right here from the directory from, I think, 1992. Um, Maydell and Walter joined Madison Square in 1946, and they were here when I joined in 1979. One of my favorite memories about Walter is that he would greet the women of the church on Sunday morning at that breezeway door with camellias that he had picked from his bush that morning. You felt very lucky to get one of Walter's camellias. They were fabulous. They were very active in the church 
life. They were, this was their home and this was their family. Uh, sadly, Walter passed away in 1993 and Maydell followed in 1995. They didn't have children. So they, in their will, they left almost everything in their estate to Madison Square Church. Their home, all their furniture, and even the camellia bush. Although I'm sorry to say that attempts to transplant it to the church were not successful. The church even received Maydell's recipe box, which I still have in the church archives. They also left financial gifts of over a million dollars, some of which were used to support the church through some troubled financial times, as well as for funding the Rowley Lecture Series that the church sponsored for several years. And they also left us a 313 acre ranch close to Big Springs, Texas, along with the mineral rights to that land. In 1996, the session voted to sell the ranch, but retain the mineral rights. The Rowleys truly blessed the church that they had loved. Years passed and the church received lease money for those mineral rights from various oil companies. The lease money was used to support the mission work of this church. Then in the months prior to the pandemic, Laredo Petroleum, the current lease holder, decided to drill eight slant wells on the property. Because of the pandemic's low oil prices, the wells did not go into production until January of this year. In April and May, the church received the first royalty deposits from the oil company, totaling $1,479,000. The bulk of the oil production from these wells is expected to last from 12 to 18 months. These funds are being The session has determined to keep these funds separate from any operational costs of the church while we explore together the great good we can accomplish from this windfall from Walter and Maydell. I'm sure they are thrilled to know that their generous gift from 25 years ago will lead to whatever wonderful world-changing missions Madison Square chooses to pursue in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret, and thank you, Session. Thank you uh, to the Rollies and to all the people throughout the years who have worked on renewing the lease and making sure that everything was in order with that. Uh, it is an enormous opportunity for us to continue vibrant and whole and successful and to bless not only this campus and the people in it, but also our community and the world. And now with that piece of really good news weighing on our hearts and our minds, let us prepare to worship God. Esta es la fuente de identidad. This is the font of identity. Esta es la mesa de sustentos. This is the table of sustenance. Esperanza, this is the book of memory. Bienvenidos, people of God, welcome home. Bienvenidos every week. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a welcoming respite from the chaos of life. <laughs> a moment to exhale and feel safe, welcome, and loved. What else does it mean? It's inclusive. Everyone who hears it is welcome. All of us. Why is it so important? Because so many of us have felt unwelcome in places of worship. At Madison Square, you are welcome no matter who you are, what you believe, what you've done, or who you love. The welcome is not earned, it's given. Thanks be to God and this church for welcoming us home.
up, mount up like an eagle to the heights beyond the clouds. Strife and sorrow shall not stop you. Pain and tears shall lose their power. Even though the young may stumble, God the Lord renews their strength. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. Now please join me in the prayer of confession. God of open doors and open arms, there is no one who can hide from your love. You pursue us when we run and tear down walls built by us and by others. There is no stronger force than your love, but we confess that while we are supposed to be your people and serve the world with the power of that love, we often withhold invitations to others and feel unwelcome ourselves in the worldwide church. We have a safe place here and we don't wanna shake things up with too many new people and ideas. We like the familiar comforts we've grown used to. Forgive us, God for choosing to share the weekly welcome with the ones we know and trust, but hesitating to expand the welcome to strangers. There are no strangers in your eyes.
we are assured of God's grace. Individuals themselves and individuals who run churches may, physic may withhold welcome to others, but God's warm and gracious invitation is for all of us. In Christ, we feel right at home. Alleluia. Amen. Friends, from wherever you are, whether you are gathered with loved ones or all on your own, we encourage you in this moment to take a time to pass the peace to one another, to those that you love, whether that is in person or electronically. And from our house to yours, may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. And now those of you who are young and young at heart, it is time to gather closer to your screens. We have a special guest with us today to share a book that she has brought. This is Margaret. Everybody say hi to Margaret and uh, gather close. Good morning. Today in our service, we're going to talk about welcoming people. And if you were here, I'd ask you exactly what that meant but I know you well enough to know that you would tell me that it means that everybody, come on, y'all come, y'all are welcome. All y'all. All y'all, all huh? y'all, as our mayor said this all week about Pride Week, all y'all are welcome. Um, and we know it's because God loves us. And so we have to show that love to the rest of the world. That's what we're about. And we welcome everyone. So today we're gonna read a story about someone who was welcomed even when they weren't really quite sure who they were or where they belonged. Not quite war, Norwal. Kelp was born deep in the ocean. He knew exactly, he knew early that he was different from the other Norwals. His tusk wasn't as long as everyone else's. He had different tastes in food. Look at his face, guys. <laughs> and he wasn't a very good swimmer. You notice he's got a diving helmet on. I love that part. But his friends didn't seem to mind, so Kelp decided he wouldn't either. That is, until he was swept away by a strong current. I wish I was a better swimmer. Kelp found himself at the surface closer to land than he had ever been before. High up on a cliff, he spotted a mysterious sparkling creature. It looked so familiar. It looked like kelp. Kelp swam towards the land as fast as he could, which wasn't very fast at all, hoping that he could catch up with the creature that looked just like him. When he finally reached the shore, Kelp felt a little bit anxious. He had never left the ocean. He was nervous about walking for the first time, but the land creatures made it look so easy. So first he likes, tries to walk like a crab. That, that didn't work, <laughs> oof, it wasn't easy. Then he tried to walk like a frog, ow. Eventually he got the hang of it. Everything on land was strange and beautiful, but also kind of scary. Kelp began to think he might never find the creature that looked just like him. But as he stumbled out of the forest, land narwhals. Actually, we're unicorns, and by the look of it, so are you. Kelp had never heard of unicorns before. They taught him all sorts of new things about his tusk. We call them horns. Wow. They introduced him to unicorn delicacies. I love it. Unicorn, a unicorn snow cone. And they showed him how to gallop. There was no doubt that kelp was, in fact, a unicorn. He was having so much fun that he didn't want to leave. But then he remembered all of his friends under the sea. Kelp missed them terribly. 
So he said goodbye to the unicorns and returned to the ocean. Come back soon. Kelp swam towards home as fast as he could, which wasn't very fast at all, hoping that the narwhals would still like him now that he was a unicorn. When he finally arrived, Kelp had butterflies in his stomach. But look at the sign, welcome home, Kelp. Kelp took a deep breath and told his friends the news. It turns out I'm not a narwhal. Of course you aren't. I'm a unicorn. We all knew that. They took it quite well. <laughs> Kelp was happy to be home, but now that he'd experienced life on land with the unicorns, he couldn't seem to forget them. Did he want to be a land narwhal with the unicorns or a sea unicorn with the narwhals? He just couldn't decide. But then he realized that maybe, just maybe, he didn't have to choose. Guys, this picture's awesome. You look closely. I love the unicorns roasting marshmallows on their, their hot tusk. And, and the narwhals playing volleyball with the unicorns. It, it's a great picture. Mm -hmm. And did you put the next picture in here? Yes. Okay, guys, look, this is the end flap of the... Uh, I'm a unicorn. No, maybe not. But. <laughs> so, welcome. You know what that means now. Let's pray together. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. To show welcome to everyone. To show welcome to everyone. To know that we are always. To know that we are always. Welcome in your house. Welcome in your house, whoever we are, whoever we are. Amen. Amen. That was a pretty good book. I think that could serve as the sermon for today. <laughs> but instead of uh, going right to the sermon, we're going to have another one of our minutes for session. Uh, and so we're going to welcome Frank Marasco, our elder, uh, who is the chair of Building and Grounds, to come give us a minute for his committee and what he does. As chairman of Building and Grounds, um, uh, um, <laughs> I have to confess a, a capricious and, and a curiosity for some of the uh, sites that many of you don't get a chance to see. About four years ago, the cord that rang the bell uh, that welcomes everybody to, uh, to come to church uh, broke, and I had to get up there and crawl up there and, and, and replace that, that one-inch hauser of a cord, and it just occurred to me. I wonder what it sounds like from up here. In trying to get it to ring, I had to get some momentum and all of a sudden it, it, it would clang. And, and, and let me tell you, that was a really dumb thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Another uh, uh, area that you may not be able to see if you, unless you're in the choir is in these rooms here above, behind those grills are the pipes that uh, uh, we, 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 lovingly uh, uh, are proud of and, and, our, and our organist. Um, also, <clears throat> the original fresco on the back can be seen, some details there, um, and would like to be more uh, uh, in looking into that some more with maybe the Ericsons as we do a, perhaps a, even a, a workshop or something. Okay, next slide. There's another one of the little bit of the, the back wall. Next slide. Seeing through the, the louvers here, more of that fresco. Next slide. Next slide. Another time we had uh, 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 Live Oak Singers do a concert here. Uh, for It was their first Christmas concert and I had to design something that we could mask off the, the church part of the, sanct the, the, the sacristy here and um, be, uh, next, next slide and be easily uh, mounted and unmounted for their opening concert, the Christmas concert back then. Next slide. But we forgot about the next day we had the presentation of our new members. And so we had to take all the scenery down and uh, <laughs> for Sunday morning service. Next slide. And put it all back up for next slide, the final concert. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And I just wanted to, to let you know, in case you're interested, um, 
in, in, in joining our committee. Next slide. Pastor Bart gave us a, an invitation. God is, has an important part for you. Yes, you to play. If you're interested in being on the committee, uh, please contact Carol in the, in the church office and she will get us in touch. Thank you. I've got so much to thank God for so many wonderful blessings and so many open doors a breath That's why I praise you And for this I give you The praise For waking me up each morning
Wow. Whew. We just had church in here, folks. Bet between narwhals and for every mountain, I don't need to go on any further than that. That is remarkable. We do, we do want to send a congratulations to three of our choir members who graduated college this spring semester. For Bozzy, for Sarah, and for Christina, congratulations on your hard work and your accomplishments. And thank you for being a part of our choir and for adding your talent to our worship service. And we wish you all the best as you carry on in your journeys. And we are sorry that we don't get to hear you sing in person uh, one more time. We invite you to come back anytime you want to jump into our choir to bless us again with your voice. And, uh, and we wish you all the best. Let us continue our worship in prayer. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer, in whose name we pray. Amen. Today we return once again to Matthew chapter 10, as we have done twice already. Jesus has been giving instructions to the disciples about a trip he's sending them on. The first instructions were to go only to the people of Israel, and we discussed our inherent bias. The second instructions were to go without any money or traveling comforts, and we discussed poverty and our care for the poor. And today we read the end of the traveling instructions, verses 40 through 42. Listen now for the word of God. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in my name, in the name of a disciple, excuse me, truly I tell you, None of these will lose their reward. A few years ago, pre-COVID, Madison Square had the opportunity to host a Jennifer Knapp concert. Another church in town was interested in becoming a More Light church. More Light is an organization within the PCUSA, which is our denomination, that exists to encourage full participation of the LGBTQIA plus community in the life and ministry of the church. So the church invited Jennifer to town. They organized panel discussions and roundtables and the concert and asked us to partner with them and have the concert here on Saturday night and then have her play at their church on Sunday morning during their worship service. I grew up listening to Jennifer Knapp, and I still had a CD or two of hers, so I was excited. Jennifer Knapp, for those of you who don't know, was a contemporary Christian superstar in the 1990s. She won Dove Awards, which is the big award of contemporary Christian music, and she got Grammy nominations. She was big. And then she disappeared in 2002, just disappeared. Eight years later, she reemerged and announced that she was writing music again and was, by the way, a lesbian. You can imagine how that went. I got the chance to meet her at the home of the elder who organized the event for the other church, who, by the way, now is a transgender man going to seminary. Jennifer and her partner showed up and filled plates of quiche and breakfast casserole, fruit and bacon. We snacked and talked about the schedule and such, and when everybody had settled in, we introduced ourselves to one another. When it was my turn, I said, I'm the parish associate at Madison Square Presbyterian, where you'll have the concert on Saturday. And then before I could say any more, the pastor of the other church jumped in and added, Madison Square is the mothership of inclusion. We all laughed, <laughs> the mothership. But in that moment, I also beamed with pride. 
the conversation around the table turned to other topics, including transgender rights. The folks from the other church admitted that while they were ready for gays and lesbians, they didn't know if they were ready for trans folks yet. I swallowed my bacon, cleared my throat, <clears throat> and said, we're very comfortable with transgender members. In fact, our liturgist last week is a trans woman. Their mouths dropped open and bits of egg fell out. <laughs> wow, Jennifer said, that's amazing. I told you, the pastor said, it's the mothership. She said, Jennifer said the same thing when she walked into our sanctuary that Saturday night for the sound check. She looked at this amazing sanctuary and considered who was included here and said, wow, that's amazing. Sometimes I forget how rare Madison Square is. Jennifer has traveled the world and this was one of the few places that she had found that was so inclusive and so much like the traditional churches that she had grown up in with the stained glass and the pews and the hymnals. I take it for granted how safe it is to be authentic here, that we don't have a don't ask, don't tell policy, that you can bring your family, bring your friends, wear what you want, bring your whole self. A few years ago, when the momentum was moving in one direction, we actually asked ourselves as a church, since other churches are becoming more open and affirming of the LGBTQIA community, how are we going to define ourselves in this downtown space if people who are currently driving 45 minutes to get here in a few years will have six to 10 other churches closer to their homes that are inclusive and that they would be welcome at? In 2019, before COVID, a different Presbyterian church than the one I mentioned earlier welcomed the Live Oak Singers, who Frank mentioned. The Live Oak Singers is an LGBTQIA plus and allies choir that was started here at Madison Square and has grown so much that they have needed larger space to practice and sing in. It was a big moment for that church to invite the choir into their sanctuary one of the choir members of the Live Oak Singers had been attending that church and that church had grown to love that individual and because of that relationship and that care that they had for that person, they were ready to take a chance and invite the whole choir for a fundraising concert. But I also realized that while the momentum was going in one direction for a while, things have not moved as fast as we had hoped for our community. Polarization of political views and a pandemic and the slow gears of change with committees and subcommittees and church policy has slowed the pace of churches becoming open and affirming. In Mission Presbytery, our presbytery, seven churches are part of the More Light organization. Two of them are here in San Antonio and five are in Austin. The, the church that hosted the Jennifer Knapp weekend, some of their leadership that was pushing for that moved away and the church lost the momentum. They never joined More Light. And neither did the church that hosted the Live Oak Singers. It's just us and University Presbyterian, which is down the road. And in our country, momentum seems to have stalled out too. Or perhaps it would be better to say that the battles for justice and inclusion and health care and safety for the LGBTQIA plus community is a two steps forward, two steps back kind of dance that's leaving us exhausted from the fight. For example, so far in 2021, 82 anti-trans bills have been proposed in state legislatures across the country, which is a record surpassing last year's total of 79 and it's only June. These bills aren't being brought by citizens with actual problems. They're being pushed by fringe groups hoping to win political points and fire up their base. For the most part, they're being vetoed or fail to get to a final vote. Others that are signed are overturned by judges, but some are making their way into the law books and 
many are being discussed on the local and national news where they are just given oxygen to breathe and grow and the story circulates more and it's part of a national conversation instead of being thrown into the dumpster fire of hate where it belongs. One administration will protect rights, another will revoke them. This is not how human beings should be forced to live their lives and make decisions about where to live and what to do for their job or what healthcare decisions or insurance claims to make. And while I think Pope Francis is a pretty great guy and all, I'm stunned that the US Conference of Catholic Bishops is drafting a document that would allow individual bishops the right to judge whether or not a politician or public figure who supports women's reproductive rights should be receiving the Eucharist. The last time I checked, it's not theirs to give. And in response, a quote has come from the Vatican. The concern in the Vatican is not to use the access to the Eucharist as a political weapon. Amen. We say it quite often on the first Sunday of the month, the table of sustenance is not Madison Square's table. It's not the Presbyterian church's table, it's God's table. And we welcome anyone who is hungry for the bread of life to receive it, no matter who they vote for, or who they love. Our welcome is who we are. It's who we have been and who we will continue to be. Being willing to welcome people is challenging. New people leave us vulnerable. We might be changed or they might need more from us than they can give. They might challenge our traditions or theology. They might bring something new that we weren't expecting. They might stir the waters, but this Pride Sunday, I am proud to be Madison Square. I am proud to be the one who gets to say, bienvenidos, people of God, welcome home. Because extending the welcome at the beginning of every service is one of the most important parts of worship here. The welcome is for everyone for the lifelong Presbyterians, the lapsed or excommunicated Catholics, the born again Baptists, the ones who didn't grow up in church at all, the ones who were cast out, the ones who never really left but didn't quite agree with everything the church said. It's for the ones who need the church to be a hospital, to bandage wounds of exclusion or shame. It's for the ones who need the church to be a gym, to get folks in shape, to get out in the world as healthier, stronger disciples for Jesus. It's for the tired who need a rest and for the energetic ones who need a place to serve. It's for the curious, the confident, the doubters, the skeptical, and the joyful. It's for the long timers who joined three installed pastors ago and the newbies who only started worshiping with us during COVID. The bienvenidos is for all of us because Jesus expected his followers to be welcomed as if the hosts were welcoming him. Again, I, I go back to Matthew 25, which is our challenge for the entirety of 2021. When you do something kind for someone else, it's as if you are doing it for Jesus and you will be rewarded for your kindness, Jesus says. Now at Madison Square, we don't welcome people because we expect to be rewarded by them or by God. We welcome people because we want the welcome for ourselves. We feel like it's what God is leading us to do, and it's how we live out the gospel here. We do try to care for others as if we are caring for Jesus, and we admit it's not always easy, and we don't do it perfectly. Madison Square has taken a lot of risks in becoming so welcoming. It's been demanding and challenging to be at the front of the pack and to be known as the mothership of inclusion in the community. It means that the microscope is on us. And that the danger is on us, that we take a risk to be who we are, to welcome prophets and righteous people and the poor and the hurting, people who can speak truth to power and challenge the status quo. Most of you know the story about how back in the 1980s, Madison Square heard, perhaps for the first time, 
one of our own announced that he was gay. And we welcomed him to be authentically himself and remain an integral part of our lives. And after that, we welcomed a prophetic pastor who led the church and had before that learned to hold the hands of hospitalized AIDS, AIDS patients when very few others would. She caused a lot of controversy when she led the way in having Madison Square become a more light organization. We openly welcomed gay people into our session and onto our deacon boards, ordaining them for ministry to the church when others wouldn't. We, especially she, got into a lot of hot water for that too. We advocated for civil unions and then marriages for all people. And then you went and you welcomed an openly gay minister to your staff. You all are one crazy bunch and I am forever and ever in your debt. I remember the Sunday a few years ago when a man stood across the street from our sanctuary yelling about how women couldn't and shouldn't be ministers. It was a day Bart was on vacation and I was preaching. I don't think he knew that, but we were pretty nervous about his intentions. A couple gentlemen from the church walked over to him with a glass of water and invited him into the fellowship hall to talk. He declined, but Madison Square took a risk to be welcoming of women in ministry and welcoming to people who disagreed with that stance. I remember in 2012, witnessing the trial of Reverend Dr. Jane Spar, one of the first openly lesbian ministers in the PCUSA. She was charged by the church with officiating 16 same gender marriages in the state of California in 2008, when it was legal in the state government's eyes, but not yet in the country or in the PCUSA. The trial was a big deal. It was the final appeal heard by the General Assembly Permanent Judicial Commission with the equivalent of our US Supreme Court. And they happened to hold the trial in San Antonio. While the commission applauded her ministry and heard the testimony of many of the couples she had married and said that yes, Jesus and the gospel were advocates of love. They also said that the Presbyterian constitution was strict and specific, and she was found guilty. For those of you who are new to the PCUSA, our church constitution was amended two years later to allow for same gender weddings officiated by Presbyterian ministers, but that week she was found guilty. And do you know where she spent the evening commiserating? Here, in the fellowship hall, with us. We welcomed a guilty person who dared to affirm love in a way the church wasn't ready to accept at the time. You think Mission Presbytery and the leaders of the denomination knew where she was? Oh yeah, they knew. Being radically welcoming is risky, but Jesus promises that the rewards are great. Jane Spar now enjoys something of a busy retirement with her grandson and her family and has a a reconciliation project housed at San Francisco Theological Seminary in her name. She was able to witness the US government and the Peace USA both legalize same gender marriages and feel, felt justified in her struggles for equal rights for marriage and ministerial rights in the Peace USA for the LGBTQIA community. She's a living legend, a prophet. And for us, we have been rewarded in ways too numerous to count over the years. Before COVID, we were dreaming of bigger things. During COVID, we had the resources to adapt and cope and continue to pay all of our staff their full wages and salaries. We welcomed people digitally who hadn't worshiped with us before. But now, now we are receiving an incredible gift a financial reward that I truly believe is directly tied to our commitment to being welcoming of prophetic and righteous people. 
of welcoming people who speak God's truth in love, even when it's contrary to the status quo, of welcoming change, of welcoming questions and doubts, of welcoming the LGBTQIA plus community, an outcast group of God-fearing, God-loved people who very few churches have welcoming invitations for. We welcome people in the name of Jesus. We declare them people of God, children of God. And like the Samaritan woman at the well, we give cups of cold water, living water, to people who are parched for grace and for a place to live out their faith. Madison Square is, at its core, at its foundation, a welcoming place. And the rewards have been coming. But this new gift announced on Pride Sunday, as we read scripture about how Jesus promises rewards to those who welcome prophets and righteous people, seems beyond coincidental. It seems to to use a word from John Calvin that I don't always use, predestined. I'm not suggesting that our LGBTQIA plus inclusion is the reason the Rollies left us the oil and mineral rights to that land in West Texas. It's not. I'm not suggesting that we don't have more work to do to be more welcoming to others. But I'm saying that Jesus promised rewards for those who took risks in welcoming people in his name. And with every Bienvenidos, we do just that. Thanks be to God for the prophets who came our way and the people who have led and continue to lead this church who extend the welcome week after week and for the Rollies and others who have given generously to this church so that we can worry more about extending the welcome and less about worrying about the bottom line. Bienvenidos. People of God, welcome home. Amen. As is our custom on Pride Sundays, we have a litany of inclusion that we like to share. And I'm going to invite Frank and Margaret back to help me with this piece. We are the beloved children of God. Made in the image image of God, God. we are as diverse and unique as our fingerprints. God made us in a variety of ways and has revealed through creation that different expressions of sexuality and gender are not sins to be confessed or sicknesses to be cured, but are natural human experiences While some some would restrict restrict us us from the table of the Lord, from church membership, from church leadership, from ordination, from jobs, from marriage, from adoption, because because of their their restricted restricted view view of the Bible, Bible, their restricted view of love, and their restricted view of reality, we welcome all to the table of the Lord. We We say say to to all all who are excluded because because of skin skin color, color, physical physical and and mental mental ableness, income level, marital status, gender, gender identity, or sexual orientation, be excluded excluded no more. We are stretching out our hands to those who have been stereotyped, stigmatized, labeled, and assigned to the margins of church and society, saying, in the name of Jesus, partake of the table. Join our churches. Lead our churches. Retain your jobs. Marry the one you love. Because Because we are are all all God's God's beloved beloved children. children. We will live, laugh, love, and lead. With integrity, dignity, faithfulness, gratitude, and joy. We are are fearfully fearfully and and wonderfully wonderfully made. made. Amen. Thank you both. And now we will continue our worship by taking a moment to give back to God what God has placed on our hearts to give. If part of your giving is through the life and ministry of Madison Square Presbyterian Church, we encourage you at this time to write a check or to make a note to yourself to 
make a digital uh, payment online as we continue to worship God. the joy and the love of the Lord, we are called to be light for the kingdom, to live in the freedom of the city of God. We are called to act with justice. Holy One be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our God. 
Indeed, God, we give you all our thanks and praise as we celebrate so much in the life of our church. The saints who have gone before us have given us a financial foundation of strength and possibility, a theological foundation of love and inclusion, and a foundation of our worship that begins with bienvenidos. And we give you thanks for the many people who made Pride Sunday and the Morelite Presbyterians and the PCUSA's constitutional changes possible to include LGBTQIA plus people in the full life and potential of work in the church. We give you thanks for the individuals at Madison Square who vulnerably shared their stories with others because change happens at the speed of relationships. We give you thanks for leaders who care more about the gospel truth than the budget or anything else, and for a congregation full of people who keep believing in God when other churches and denominations no longer felt like home. We pray for our church leaders today facing decisions about the immediate and long-term future of our church. We pray for our interim, Reverend Kreutzer, as he prepares to join us on our journey, for our re-entry team, session, deacons, and worship and tech teams. We pray for our sister church in Cuba and those at Madison Square building relationships with them. We pray for our friend Carl, the truck driver, whose MRI was postponed last week and desperately wants to go home. We pray for Emil and Melissa, Michelle and Damaso, that they might have complete recoveries from their illnesses. We pray for Jonathan. We pray for Hank's continued recovery and healing. We pray for Mary Ann and her mother, Sherry, who is nearing death. Mary Ann's father, Rick, who's battling cancer. And Mary Ann's stepfather, Tom, recovering from COVID and pneumonia. We pray for all of them and for Mary Ann's mental and physical strength as she deals with all of this. We pray for Sharon Hawthorne, who is suffering with end-stage pancreatic cancer and for her husband, Tom. We pray for the friend of Linda Nance, who is living out her last days for peace and comfort and grace. We pray, God, and thanks for the Rollies and for others who have given generously to this church. And above all, God, we give you thanks for your son who radically and shockingly welcomed people who had been unwelcome. It's in his name that we pray together saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us join together in our benediction. The good news is for all of us. The bienvenidos is for everybody. Make everyone feel welcome. The bienvenidos is for everybody. We represent God's love. The bienvenidos is for everybody. Though others would deny us, we will not deny or withhold it from others. The bienvenidos is for everybody. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Thank you.